Yes, good afternoon and welcome once again. It's a very beautiful day out there. I'm your host, Leonard Gildari, and this is the Wake Up Show on Kaicho Radio 99.1, 99.5. I hope that you're having a wonderful day. It's a beautiful day out there, lots of things to do, and you have to find things to do. Do not sit still. Nothing happens if you're sitting still. You have to constantly do things, whether you go into a garden, whatever, or you plant a garden, you dig up some things. You have to get things doing, or else nothing is going to happen. So I want to say a good day. I want to say a welcome to everybody who's, who would have been joining us on this uh, Wake Up Gayana show on Kaicho Radio, all across this beautiful nation of ours, and wherever else that you're joining us from. I'm your host, Leonard Gildari, and you're tuned in to 99.1, 99.5 FM here. And we're coming to you live from our studio down in Charleston, Saffron Street, Charleston. And so we are going to, uh, today, uh, the budget uh, debates, um, the budget estimates, uh, they are, the process is continuing uh, in the National Assembly. Uh, there, which is being kept temporarily at the Artichon Convention Center on the east coast of Demerara. And so, uh, while that is happening, they hopefully that they they want to get that out of the way this week so we could move on three more months remaining in the rest of the year. And before we get into things, of course, you know, we got a little housekeeping to do, which is that today happens to be uh, the birthday of one of our directors, Tishana Lal. How are you doing, my dear? And she's just 16 years old. I know she's going to say it's much more than that. But I believe I want to say on behalf of the rest of the staffers in Kaichu Radio and Kaichu News, a good day to you, Tishana Lal. I hope that you bring cake and food and whatever else it is. Do not come to the meeting with your long hands. So we want to say much love to you and have a pleasant rest of the day as you spend it. Uh, so there's some big news coming out today. Yesterday it was uh, the grade 6 exams results that came out. And of course, the public schools are leading the way. Uh, there seems to be a shift from where the private schools would have been uh, running things for a little while. Uh, but it does not matter. At the end of the day, what I want to say to you guys, it does not matter how you would have done. Uh, it's not the end of the road. It's a, a, a life goes on. So there's always an opportunity to pick yourself up, dust yourself out, and let's move on. So let's give our kids... Let's give our, our brothers and sisters the encouragement in their young life. It's the beginning of life. It's just a little hurdle that they would have gone past there. There's a CXC. There's a whole bunch of things. It could end up at the university level, and it could go on and on. Education, the education of man is not over until you say it's done. So we could be at 40 years old, and I've known many in the 40s. Um, we had a former prime minister of Ghana. I think he was in his... Fathers or his fifties when he did a law degree. It's no other than Moses Nagamutu. So, you know, there's many persons who would have done it very late in life. You could do it too. So it's not over. This is not where we separate the goat from the sheep or the bright boys from the young boys. It's just it's one part, a transitionary part in life. And so today's CXC results are going to be out. I don't happen to have those details right now. But as it come, of course, you could read that in your favorite newspaper, the Kaicho newspaper. And in a very short while, I'm going to tell you what is it that your favorite newspaper, Guyana's largest selling newspaper, has to say um, to the people of Guyana, what it has shared to the people of Guyana today. Because, uh, you know, they, this newspaper here is something else. They don't hold any bars. They're not affiliated to any political system or parties. And they will say what they have to say without any icing on the cake. So before that... Let me tell you what uh, uh, a couple of things that happened that I must share with you. Or uh, probably we could come back to that in a very short while. Uh, let's see what the Kaichu newspaper. It's uh, September the 22nd, 2020. My God, uh, this month here has really, really flown. Um, and, and Raj, don't you believe that this year is just flying through? I think it, it seems as if it's galloping to go to somewhere. I don't know where. But uh, the Kaichu newspaper today, front page. For the spike in COVID-19 cases could break our medical system. This is an emergency medical spe medicine specialist, Dr. Box. And we know whenever he speaks, we have to listen um, uh, because uh, he understands what the system emergency and otherwise what's happening. And so he's warning about that. And we're going to come back to this as for the spike in the COVID-19 case. Because what we see in here is not something that is very good. 
Um, uh, in fact, we've been warning about it for several months now to protect ourselves, but people don't want to hear. And uh, you know what the old people says? When you don't hear, you're going to feel, and you're going to feel it in a very harsh way. And it's unfortunate that some people are going to feel it. Um, I'm still feeling the effects of it because uh, when COVID hits you, it's, uh, it, it does things to your system that really makes you weak. I'm still trying to recover from that. But uh, that is a very important story. And this is the big one in Kaicho newspaper today because it has lots of implications. We're going to have a discussion on this. U.S. 150 million decade-long CGIA renovation scandal. I will not accept this project. Investigations to be launched. And this is President Ali just more than a month after he would have uh, been sworn in. He's making it very clear that he is the president of Guyana, and he says to the Chinese contractor, this project here that you're part of, we're not going to accept it as it is. You had a fixed price contract to give me a house, to give me a car, to give me a bed. I didn't ask you to give me a shack. And so this Chinese contractor, China Harbor, delivered something that was unbelievable to the people of Guyana. We took a loan of $138 million. And then uh, we had to find on our own as our part of the loan. Because remember, when you take a loan, you have to find part of it. We had to find $12 million. And so it was a project for $150 million. And so this company here, uh, the Chinese premier was in the Caribbean uh, around 2010, 2011 year. This is shortly before Bai Jack Day would have ended his two-term tenure. And this is what he had to say. Um, uh, they, they, he was in the Caribbean. He says, look, we're going to uh, roll out some money for capital projects, for uh, major project infrastructure projects in the Caribbean here. You could apply. So this Chinese company came here with a very nice, shiny-looking uh, document which says that, look, you guys want to build something? Come up with a project, and we're going to find the money. We're going to find the contractors, and we're going to do it. So it was decided that this project here, this is in 2011, that the project that they're going to do was the airport project. And, you know, Guyana wanted to make, uh, uh, the government of the day wanted to make Guyana the hub of the Caribbean in ter or the hub of South America in terms of getting flights to Africa. At least that was, was said. And so here's where the story got weird. This company signed an agreement without um, even getting the, the cash, without finding, finding out where the money is going to come from. They signed an agreement with the government. It was done all Hush, well, at least it was done in Jamaica, and then Guyana heard about it through the media here. The biggest um, infrastructure project we learned through the media in Jamaica. And so this happened a few days before elections. Fast forward, this would have been the fourth presidency or the fourth set of government that this project passed through. So it started with Bar Jagdeo, it went through with Donald Ramachar, then it went through with uh, David Granger. And it's landed right on the lap of um, Irfan Ali at the moment. And so this company here, the president wanted to see what the status of it. Of course, he would have been brief, but he wanted to see what it is. You remember that Irfan Ali was the minister of tourism in the, or in charge of tourism leading up to the 2015 period. So he would have been uh, sitting right next to the CGIA board there and having an idea uh, what is happening. And so... It is uh, a lot of um, this, this project uh, was being criticized heavily, and especially when we hear now that more money in addition to $150 million is being spent. So if you spend $150 million, why would you reduce the scope of work? So if you're building a house that is torn to 2 by 64, and then you decide to make it 10 by 20, it's a big part of the work. You, you know what you're doing there? You're reducing the size of the work. So it means less money. So how did we go past $150 million? So many questions. What is happening right now is that the government says very clearly to the Chinese company, we're not going to accept this. I presume there's some money that's um, been outstanding. But significantly, the president says that everybody, all the stakeholders in this particular project here, has to take the blame for it. The contractor... The supervising contractor, um, and of course, uh, uh, our representatives is there. Where, what happened? How did you fall like this? So the contractor told the president, you know, we had some other things to do. The president says, that is not acceptable. Uh, if we give you a, a fixed price contract, you're supposed to check to make sure that uh, that's what you want to do. You signed on to it, and therefore, I will not accept this. We have to fix this. And so this would have come a few days after, you know, the Americans would have been here. You could remember the Secretary of State 
and no other than um, Mike Pompeo was here recently in Guyana last week to high profile visit and he is making a pitch for his government fair enough he's representing his government and he's saying to the people of Guyana you know you could use our companies a little more so this would have come a few days after that does it have any significance any connection we don't know what we do know at the moment is that Guyana cannot accept that fully agree with the president on this and somebody has to answer and I agree with the president also that there should be an investigation into this project here we as a people of Guyana cannot cannot accept anything 150 million dollars US dollars do you know what that money could do that's a hundred uh, what is that? It is $30 billion, right? Is it $30 billion? I'm going to have to check it back. But that could do so many things in here, and it could be half of a harbor bridge across the Demerara River, or some people could probably build it for that price. Yeah, I don't know, but what I could tell you, it could do so many things to alleviate uh, this temporary poverty or this uh, situation that we have with the pandemic. So we can't accept that. And the same company here, before I move on, the same company came and they decided that they got somebody decided to give them the contract to build a movie town. So don't forget, they would have been given um, duty free concessions with trucks and other materials to build and so on, equipment. And then other material, you could bring them in by the container load. So they went and started building the movie town. Guess what happened? The movie town is up and running. Ghana does not have the airport. The story doesn't stop there. We went straight to the Pegasus Hotel. And they have gotten the contract for that. Now we're hearing that they might have gotten some contract at, at the, the Aurora Mines. We don't know yet. We're going to check that out. It's been reported as such. What we do know, what we do know is that it is unacceptable that uh, so you could walk into our country, give us a six for nine, and believe that we could accept it. Well, no more. I think the line has been drawn in the sand. And let's see where this goes. So I'm not going to accept this project here. The president told the Chinese contractor for the airport, the Tamiri airport contract. Uh, public school boys share top places at NGSA. And so they would have gotten 525 marks. I think it's a 530 they would have went for. And so this is an interesting story. And we're waiting on the CXC results. I think the uh, Minister of Education is unveiling that every year we go through this. Have we done better? I think it's good to see that our public schools are doing a little better. And congratulations to these kids. And congratulations to all the students who would have worked on it. Uh, you have won because you've completed some part of your education. It is an attempt to dust yourself off and improve, and it's not the end of the world. So let's encourage our young ones. It's the only thing that we can do. Asphalt plant racket uncovered, and this is an interesting story too. Um, it looks as if we have an asphalt plant. The government owns it, and they would have been selling. It seems as if they've been uh, selling at half price. There's some racket there in which they're doing things. I know the Harbor Bridge would have been speaking to us this morning. It has oversight for this asphalt company and they would have cleared the air and says, look, we don't know anything about this. We have our system in place and uh, it could be something, not saying anything that's not happened, but um, from our end, uh, this is our system. So they have given their side of it. Uh, so we're going to continue to, tr to, to check on the story here. Untraceable, there's another one that you should know about. Untraceable Florida company handed $30 million for birth certificates by APNU FC. And this is Minister Gear Tashira speaking in the National Assembly yesterday during the budget uh, debates, the budget estimates um, examinations. And she's saying that there is this company with very little records of doing business all of a sudden handed a $30 million project to Port Certificates. And the investigations reveal company headed by Larry London. That's strange. Very strange case. Um, it seems as if um, uh, there's a couple of things I'm not sure. Um, Tashira says that uh, this this company, um, normally when you go for board certificates and the printing of it, it's going to the local people in Guyana here. And so when you would have gone suddenly overseas, and then in addition to that, when uh, the reporters did their calculation, you found out that one of these farms, based on what we printed for, it's $1,500. $1,500, so you could buy one of these farms for a couple hundred bucks. But here it is that we print in till some in Miami according to what we see in here. Who knows, maybe it could have been printed right here and they just say that it's Miami company. We're not sure what happened here, but I think they're investigating that. Again, this oil will give has 10% growth rate in a few years despite pandemic. Oh, so you guys got to wake up and smell the coffee again? 
because here it is that the uh, Ganas oil is so important to a couple of companies, including S Exxon. Exxon has dropped everything to come to Guyana because it knows it's getting cheap oil, good quality oil, and with uh, with very few high takes. And here it is that Hess, another company which is partnering with Exxon on that Stabrook block, is saying that our growth rate is 10%. 10% is significant for any company. And so in a, uh, despite this pandemic, which the World Bank says is going to erase a significant part of our growth, if it continues, well, Hess is saying, Hess is a partner in that oil company, in that oil venture there uh, at Stabrook. Uh, they're saying that we are going to see 10% growth. So it means that our uh, authorities here have to be play, paying close attention to what these companies are saying. When you hit the negotiation table and these people tell you what we'll be earning, it gives you an idea what you should be asking for. It gives you an edge. So pay attention, learn. We're in school in the moment. I'm learning. You should learn too. And we can't sit down and sit on our hands and not do anything. We have an opportunity to get things right here. Ramsatan bypass board to approve gun license. Uh, this is Robertson Ben. And so we have to pay attention to that. These, these are things that are not good. Um, there's systems and procedures, but it has to be followed. Uh, so we continue. Guyanese man who migrated to U.S. three years ago, killed at bus stop, and the car slammed into him. Um, let me tell you, there's a major story that we should pay attention to. A couple of days back over the weekend on Sunday, Kaichu News broke with a very important story. 120 inmates of the Luziknan prison tested positive. Today, or yesterday, within the last few hours, it was confirmed in the National Assembly by the Ministry of Health and by some others, officials, I think Mr. Robeson Ben as Minister of Home Affairs, that it is indeed true. It's a hundred and something uh, inmates uh, tested positive. And when you have a lockdown situation, inmates are being barred. This is a situation where uh, it is deeply worrying. We want to know if you have an entire prison that is um, COVID-19 um, positive, then you have a serious situation. More than 100 of these inmates tested positive would have been taken to uh, uh, an isolation area along the East Bank there. Madawini, I think it is, that was named. Uh, so this is a story that we have to follow because how did, they, did somebody drop the ball in the prison there? What happened? We need we need to pay attention to the, to this thing here. So we go on. Um, uh, so the the chief elect the chief education officer, Marcel Hudson, would have says that the, the the students done well despite the COVID nineteen challenges. And this is coming from Marcel Hudson, chief uh, education officer. There was that big video that came out yesterday that was making its way through social media. A couple of gunmen raced into a East Coast supermarket, um, and this is at Annandale. And if you saw the video, it would have shocked you. Um, some people were standing in front of the supermarket on a car, uh, in front of a car, and, and some, uh, you, you see a man, masked man, well, he's wearing his mask, and he had long sleeve, and he went into the supermarket, and then some other guys came, one other man, and held the people in front of the supermarket, and then went in. The other videos showed security cameras, cotton security camera, the drama that followed there. Because when they went into there, they closed the doors and then started robbing the owner, or got to be the manager or somebody, saw what was happening, he picked up his gun and he ran into the back room, and the, the one of the bandits saw him when he was there, and tried to kick the door down, went behind him at full speed to kick the door down, but it was closed. And then the, there was a kind of gunfight that happened here. They were exchanging shots, but these guys were very blatant. Uh, they took people there, they gun butted a, a lady there, and they, they, they went away. But there was some exchange of fire there. Um, and so, uh, you know, it seems as if we have these bandits coming out younger and younger and younger every day. And you see GTNT services restored to Region 3. Interesting story here, uh, GT&T um, uh, getting some calls there. Some people are complaining as far as uh, uh, friendship on these bank them rather. The services, lousy, lousy gt and And we can't continue to tell you. You have to continue to shame you guys because you're not doing better and you're not coming out and say what you're doing to rectify the situation. Everybody needs to know because uh, you are, you're not saying anything, but you're collecting every month. Um, your revenues, whether we have a service or a lousy service, you are getting, um, you are giving us something that is not very, very good. So at the end of the day, that's what we have to say to you. In the meantime, 
before we go to the lines, let me address a couple of things. Um, the first thing has to do with Enmore. Enmore would have been complaining about a police woman there who they say that is, you know, abusing her powers, allegedly, to uh, close a couple of business. Um, a couple of business people called me from up there, then the outside called and said the police is doing, uh, the police lady is doing her business. So back, it was a back and forth situation for a couple of days. I did indicate to you that I would have been reaching out to the police complaints authority. And uh, while he did not say much, I want to say good day to Justice Retired William Ramlal, sitting there with the Police Complaints Authority, very serious man. And he says, yes, Mr. Gildari, we have a case before us. There's a complaint file, and uh, we are investigating it. And to his credit, he did invite uh, uh, Leonard Gildari to go to, to, to the Police Complaints Authority to maybe um, have a talk to them, but they said they're not, uh, they're not at liberty to discuss anything, say anything to the media. The matter is in, in, on the investigation. So I want to say thank you very much, Zir. Always very courteous there from Mr. Justice Retired William Ramlal. And so I want to say good day to all the folks who have been joining us here today, especially down there in New York, uh, Canada right across um, uh, Europe there. We have some people just in with us every single day across the Caribbean. Our neighbors, Trinidad, Suriname, Brazil, Cayenne. How are you guys doing there? And of course, don't forget our very beautiful people here. I uh, know that every single day we have so many people sitting on, uh, in, uh, they're doing stuff in the kitchen and they have the radio, they have Kite Show Radio on 99.1, 99.5 and they're listening because they want to hear what is happening. Well, we are trying to bring the news to you as it comes. Um, uh, uh, the National Assembly right now is looking into everything there. So I think I think we would have covered it somewhat there. It is 226-7453, 226-7453. We'll open the line in a few minutes there. You could also send your messages to 6 I want to say good day to the guys down in Diamond in the Diamond Housing Scheme, in the Grove Housing Scheme. Golden Grove housing scheme there, uh, but the old Grove housing scheme as well. Samata Point, Caneville, going on to Craig there, coming back to Little Diamond, good Diamond people there, and of course Prospect Farm, Parcelin. How are you guys doing? All the way at Providence Station, especially to a good magistrates and judges who will be dispensing the justice and of course looking at the various cases. Uh, we want to ask you to make sure that uh, we take all sides of the picture, all sides of the coin and dispense those justice in uh, those uh, judgments and everything and the sentences uh, so that the people, uh, the lady of justice uh, would not uh, would be blind to whoever comes. Justice would be handed out in a very even manner. So do we have a caller online there? We go straight into the caller. Yes, good afternoon, caller. You're on the air? Hello? Yes, good afternoon. You're on the air. Go right ahead. Could you lower the volume on the radio, please? Uh, yes, uh, good afternoon, caller. You're on the air? Yes, I'd like to know. They see this fraud at the asphalt plants. Yes. There is a board of directors there. Uh huh. A general manager. They do that they are not aware about this fraud. Well, we don't know yet. As of now, it's an allegation. It, it, it is uh, several sources. I see. I read the newspaper of Kaichur News, yeah. and it's very, very clear um, that they have spoken to sources. They seem to have specific information, and I presume this is going to be taken. Well, we did speak to the Harbour Bridge this morning, um, which has oversight on that. But it's going to be interesting to see what happens. But uh, a couple of uh, sources, according to the article, you, um, have, you have a chairman there who is there for the inception of the board. Uh huh. Who's the chairman for that board? Uh, I don't know his name or what he was. He is there for the inception. He's like a god, I believe he's on GPL board now. Oh, oh, oh. oh what are you doing? Well, let's see what happened at the end of the day. What I can tell you is that we want to see our monies are being spent and we want to make sure that we get value for our money. And yeah, when you spend, you know, yeah, we. The plant was directly under control of the Denver Harbor Bridge. Oh, oh, oh. You know, and so long it happens that nobody says anything. We have to wait on this government to take over to expose it. Well, I'm not sure who would have exposed it, uh, but what I can tell you. What I can tell you is that as long as you have to do with the spending of the people money, are we going to get it and we're going to expose it? You know, we need uh -huh. some explanation. Yes. Oh, get the board to give an explanation of what's going on. Uh -huh. The minister should really intervene and, you know, 
I'll let the general public too. Uh-huh. Uh, we are going to take this a village pension. Eh? Uh-huh. At uh, the elections, they had promised to double the village pension. But they have increased it by $4,500. Well, I presume they're going to... I'm not sure what's the explanation for that. I, I think we'd have to ask. I think they're probably going to do it incrementally. Did they give a specific timeline in which to do that? Well, uh, you know, I, I mean, they will do it. They give an increment of $5,000. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. I'm not a, that's not a problem. But they should tell the people why they have a double it. You know, we need to know. Yeah, yeah. I know the state of the economy is bad or what I'm saying. Uh -huh. Come out and tell the people, that, you know, that's the election promise you made. Yes, yes. Well, it makes sense. But you know, during the election thing, a whole bunch of things promise I am um, yeah, you you're know, trying to. I mean, the, you want to fulfill your promises? Of course, of course, I hear you. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's you know, that's my concern. Uh huh. I'll thank you for your time, sir. But I hope you can get into that asphalt plant. Asphalt plant. Well, it seems to be uh, it seems to be a um a public knowledge that uh, um, nonsense happens here. Pardon me, sir. It seems to be public knowledge that something is happening here. Yeah, something, well, I hear Mr. Angel is a straight man. No, no, he's a very serious man. I know that he, if he sees this, he's going to jump on it right away. You know. God bless you, my brother. Yeah, it's okay. Take care, Mr. Gallery. That's my right. Yes, good day. Right. Yes. So, I want to say good day to everybody who've joined us today. It's a Wake Up Gyan Show. I'm your host, Leonard Gildari, and you're tuned in to Kaicho Radio 99.1 in the Demerara and Burby in Esquivo. And, of course, you can get us 99.5 down there in Burbys as well. I want to say good day to the East Coast folks. How are you doing, Annandale? How are you doing, Triumph? All the way there from the Ogle area there. I want to say good day to you at the Ogle Airport. Anatai Jun, how you guys are doing? Captain Mazar Ali. And of course, Hello? today. Yes, there's another caller online. Yes, go ahead, caller. You're on the air. Yes, Hello? yes, go ahead, caller. You're on the air. Good day. Yes, good day. You're on the air. Go right ahead. Um, I'm calling from um, Kanji Barbies. Kanji Barbies. What's happening up in Barbies here? Well, so far, everything is. Um, I said because um, I know how everything going now. People not really get work up the and so, and then in turn, not really get internet to do them school work and so, and we get full children the home. Then they get no access to no internet, no mm -hmm. device. So them the home. And so you don't have internet to your house or anything. No, and no wrong neighborhood. We ain't get no internet. So we Anybody got internet there? How you get an internet? There? Through the telephone lines or you have to do it wireless? No. No, so they don't get no internet in the saga. Still out from the road and pay for do their schools and so now the internet now open and so wrong no neighbors and so they get no internet here. So the way they try to call him if anybody to get the internet or so we to get the sorting help to get some. But if you're living around the corner by me, I would give you my internet. I'm glad to give I it. Know. In fact, I, I couple of people I don't share I'm it with and so, but I'm. <laughs> I'm not sure in that area there, and I could probably make a call out. What part in Kanji is this? Kanji is a big place. Good banana land, good banana land, and we get four children, and we never get no internet here. And we call it good banana land? Yes. Sir. Yes, I'm going to call out for there. I'm not sure what I could tell you, except that there's a problem that we're facing all over the country here yeah. with this internet problem. I think this thing has exposed us. This, this pandemic has exposed us so much that a lot of family. Yes. It is really, really sad when you hear some I of the know. stories. Is the children and most it is got things about because them the home how much months now they get nothing to do. Well if it's the book they have, you gotta buy book for them, you gotta buy for them, do them work home and then they get a farm see that if she's gonna go good in school. Now how much months now she the home they get one white time and insurance and then they still get too small when they home here. You gotta buy book for them all the time. You know, school teacher you gotta go father gotta go and pick up papers so he gets to do work them to at home. Yeah, my girl, I, I, I know, and I can tell you, you know, I can tell you about poverty. I, 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 I've experienced, uh, you know, I, I, when I hear stories like this, it really tears my heart apart. I, I really am sorry. Me, try to call in months and months. I know, it's yeah. very difficult, you yeah. know, it's, it's very difficult. We just listen to the program all the time. We just listen to the program. Yes, ma'am. Yes, thank you very much. Yes, okay. I'm going to make the call because we've been calling. Mm -hmm. I tried to shame GT&T here, but like they, like, like they don't got no shame, man. 
I don't know. All right. Well, thank you, ma'am. So all the way from Kanji, good banana land, I think it is. I hope I, I, I'm pronouncing it uh, right here. And so um, so uh, I want to say good day to the good folks down there in Kanji. It's a beautiful place. New Amsterdam as well. How are you guys doing? There's a big Kanji bridge. We need to fix that bridge and keep it. There's a beautiful view from up there. You go down to, you know, some reason or the other. It's a, it's, it's, it's a very, um, it's a very quaint little place but new amsterdam i think i i kind of like there there's something that's so quaint about that place i go down there you go over to blairmont as well and when you go down driving that road heading to the blairmont sugar estate there it's 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 wide open fields of sugar cane and so on and so it's such, such a different peaceful time if you are living in Georgetown and you go to those areas, it's a different air that you breathe, um, and you see you see the atmosphere in a different way. I'm not sure; maybe it's my imagination, but um, I think country is much more better to live. If you've gone to the hinterlands and you know you go to some places with the trees towering around you, and there's the creeks and so on, the stillness and the birds chirping and so on, it's it's just so peaceful. Um, if you've never gone to the hinterlands. If there's an opportunity that arises, you guys take a walk up there. It's it's a different life up there. It's that's why you have some people who are in the gold bush who never ever come out and come to Georgetown to live because that's the way that's what they know. They like the waterways, they like the you know, the open forest area there and have a little fence and they could drive, they could pick up themselves, jump into the vehicle, drive over, go to Brazil, across you know, the, do you know that we have a bridge connecting Brazil and Guyana? It's called the Takatu Bridge. Takatu Bridge is a lesson for you. And it was built between by the two governments a couple of years back. And you could drive from Guyana to Brazil. And uh, when you go over to Brazil, there, there's a Bonfin area there. It's a, it's a, it's a little, um, you know, the body area, very dusty and everything. But you drive maybe a couple hours, you could reach, I think, Boa Vista. And Boa Vista is just on the friends of Brazil. Brazil is a pretty big place, but when you see the kind of development that they have there, um, and uh, you know that you know it's just a border to separate us, but so much is so much different. You see the wide open fields of uh, corn and um, and and soya and so on. So you know it's just right across the border there. And you go to Suriname, to even if you step across the border into Nigeria, and there's this little place uh, that is there that's filled with casinos and hotels and car rentals and doctor's quarters and so on. And you want to know, did I just leave Guyana? Am I still in Guyana? Because it's just a couple of minutes away. But it is what it is. So we have a lot of way to go. We have to be very disciplined with it. Our people have not been disciplined. They have been very bad. They have been indisciplined. They have been done everything in their books to make sure that, you know, what is happening here is just a passing phase. It cannot be a passing phase. More than, more than 100 persons more than 100 persons in um, the um, prisons have been tested positive. So let's go back to the lines again. We want to hear from our people. Good afternoon, Kali Unir. Hi, good afternoon, Mr. Zodari. Good afternoon, ma'am. Go right ahead. Um, I have a problem, but I'm not sure if you could help me with it. Sure. Um, I am 21 years of age, and I'm a born Guyanese, but I always send and forget the birth paper, and I never get back a reply of anybody sending back something to me. Or you sent in a what? A birth paper? Yeah, a birth certificate. How long ago you did that? A couple of months. And I keep on doing it like since I was like 15 years old. And why, did, why, why you didn't go into them? Um, because it's in Georgetown, and I live in Barbies. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When you try calling them, what did they say? I don't have a number to call them, but uh, I don't have no contact either with my mom or dad, so I'm not really sure that, you know, I have a birth certificate. But oh, here, what are you going to do for me, baby? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, today as well. Call, no, no, call me this afternoon about 3.30 3 at the office here, and I'm going to try to see what I could advise. I could probably give you some numbers, and we're going to take it from there. Okay, so um, I could call the same number? No, you call 2258491. Um, you don't mind that I get a pen fast? Yes, yes, do quick. Okay. okay. In the meantime, while she's coming there, a better value for better protection. Get your ship and cargo cover with us today. CARICOM General Insurance Company, Inc. At 121 Regent and Arnock Street. To better serve you, you can now purchase your insurance online for the comfort of your home. 
telephone 225-1787 or 229-0020, CARICOM General Insurance Company, Inc. Yes, ma'am. Go right ahead. Yeah, I could have it. Yes, 225-8491. 8-5-4-9-1? No, no, 225-8491. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you. You call and ask the Okay. There's about 3 to or so, and I'm going to see what I could do, get you some numbers and so, and see how you could think. I, 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 I'm really sorry you didn't get it. But you see, these things, you've got to sit on it, because sometimes if you don't know somebody, or you, uh, you yeah. live in so far, it becomes, you know, a frustrating experience. Yeah, I understand. Okay, thank you. Keep up the good work. I listen to you every day on the radio. Yes, my dear. Do happen to have a blessed day and the rest of the day. Yeah, you too. Bless. Good day. Bye. And somebody is saying here, um, in the meantime, uh, Mr. Gildari, Classic uh, uh, International Hotel in Skeldon, uh, giving free internet for school children. This is very good. And if anybody has, let, let, me, let me challenge you guys to today. In the meantime, while we're doing our things very quietly and not talk about laptops or, 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 or any tablets or anything, uh, everybody that has internet in, in Guyana, that, uh, whether you have Wi-Fi, especially if you have Wi-Fi at home, if you could help a neighbor who might be less fortunate for them to be able to attend those Zoom classes, let us do it. Let us don't allow these kids to stay home struggling or, or something. If there's something that you could do, just give them a little bench or a desk or something if you don't want them in their house. Because I understand people need to protect themselves. You can't be looking at, into everything. But the Wi-Fi goes out beyond on the shed or something. And you could have them right next to the place. You know, you know, ones in the, you know, growing up and when you see other kids would have stuff. How it is that you feel as, as somebody, you know, I did receive a call not too long ago and, and this lady here from Kanji, uh, from Good Banana Land, I think it is, was just telling me there and it brought my mind so far, far away. Um, I could remember and th this would bring, this brought tears to my eyes and to my mom's eyes. My dad was killed in the line of duty when I was six. He was a policeman and so we grew up. Uh, I used to, mommy used to be living in um, Turkine at that moment there, not too far from where the convention center is, um, just the, on the opposite side heading to the seawall, uh, by, I think somewhere in the vicinity there of where the massive super, supermarket is. And so uh, they were living there and I was staying with my grandmother up in Enmore and um, my dad joined the police force and one night while he was guarding not too far away at the head of um, where the sheriff railway embankment is, there was a GPL power, um, I think a facility down there and he was sticking and they attacked him for his gun and he was killed. And so my mom, as a police officer, you, you had gotten some benefit. Uh, she received um, what you call the survivor's benefits and then some other thing that she would have been getting from NIS and so on um, over the years until she died, uh, which was a couple of years back. Uh, she would have been receiving that. But I can remember one time that we, I was just, what, six, seven, and she took me to see, I think it was the commission of police then. It was um, a gentleman by the name of, I think it was Lloyd Barker. Lloyd Barker was the commission of police in the 80s then. And she, you could see the tears leaking on her face, asking the commissioner, you know, whatever you could help me with. Even a day like today, until a couple of years, I think only this year we didn't do it, but up to last year, I think they would have been, uh, the laying of the reed for my dad. But to come back, the, the point is what I want to tell you is that I can remember me crying as a little boy because seeing my mom, it was the only person that I knew. I mean, my dad was gone and I was little, little six, seven years old. And uh, she's there crying in front of the commissioner of police because she wanted some help. God bless her soul because she did stand up for her two sons at that point in time. And I, and it always stood with me what poverty was and, and what it was like going to school. We couldn't even afford, I used to go to QC. I topped the entire East Bank in 1985 um, and was given QC. And so I went there and my brother and myself, we couldn't afford many days to, to take the bus or take a, a short drop car to Queens College. So we were walking. We walked to go to school from the park, which is from the East Bank Park there to Queens College, so you're talking about, you know, you're just uh, early in your teens, and you walk there, and then you come back, you walk to come back home, 
and many days we went to school without lunch. So I could tell you about poverty. When you see Gildari sit down here and talk about poverty, it is not something that I hear from somebody. I could tell you literally um, uh, what it is that we went through, what is it that we experienced, and, and um, it's a very humbling experience. And many stories like that you would hear. Glenn was, would tell a story how he slept in the Starbuck market for years while trying to build a life. Um, and he, one time I was interviewing him, he's going to forgive me for this, and uh, there were tears in his eyes, remembering those occasions. Um, uh, we, it makes us strong as a person, knowing how we go through life with, uh, with all these experiences there. Um, it has made me uh, sit down and talk to my kids from time to time to appreciate the things that you have. Uh, when I see people wasting food, it upsets me. When I see people, you not know, having appreciation of what you have right now. Back in the days, we had so little. There was no television at that point in time. Who had television were lucky. Um, there was a video show place in the area that we would go. I remember we used to go watch boxing and things like that. Um, the, the fun that we had was on Sundays in Cricket on the Road. Um, the, you would have been going by the neighbors, you play dominoes, you play Monopoly, you play cards, or you play marble in the road. I don't see kids doing that at the moment, but it is what it is. But I hope that my story there is not a sad story. It's a, I think it's been a good lesson growing up and seeing what it has. It's a call in line. Good day, call you on the air, go right ahead. I think we missed that. But I really wanted to share that because I'm not ashamed to tell people. I would tell my staff as here that I was working with you and I was a senior reporter and I was building my house and um, I was sleeping on the floor because I couldn't afford a bed for, for a couple of years. This happened a couple of years back. And, and you know, I, I'm not ashamed to say that to, 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 to the people of Guyana to sit here and, and, you know, you look all nice and dandy and things are going well, but you don't know the struggles of man. You don't know the struggles of people. We should be humble with it. Yes, good afternoon, Kuali, on the air. Good yeah. afternoon, Gil Larry. Good afternoon. How are you doing, sir? Yeah, my brother. Everything good. <clears throat> Tell me. Uh, what about you? Well, I'm trying here to remember some old stories, to remember my mom. Yeah, that is what I noticed. Yes. I see you bring back a lot of memories to mm. a lot of people here. Mm -hmm. Um, my friend here, what happened? This, uh, this thing where we see everybody call out and call out from the government, it, let the rest and self relax a bit. Now we go in. We can get progress on. Recently, 54, um, 400 hard workers have come back at the um, you know, um, quarantine estate. That one big improvement. Yes, I did see that. I did, I did see 400 that. And 10, 10, 410 workers already don't get taken out of the That's mm -hmm. a big improvement. Mm -hmm. Many things are going on a lot of places. Now, with internet service, I think GTNT need to come down very low for student, the crisis right now. Well, I, I, I'm not, you know, this thing is, I, I, I listen to that and I listen to what the people are saying and it gets me so very upset that you have a big corporate company there. I'm surprised that they haven't come out and criticized me yet because I've been criticizing there them is, for several months now, but I don't give a damn there, anymore with it. There is nothing GTNT are doing for the for the guy in his hand one day like today. So in, in this kind of crisis of pandemic, pandemic what are we going through? Get yourself for, for a stranger, they're still doing something. And sure. they remind me of the word vulture. You know, vulture, they, they, they feed on dead and things like that, you know. It, it, <laughs> it, is, it, is, it is unbelievable. When you don't, it reminds me, so Glenn was sh showing us a picture of a cow the other day and what happened with a cow with the head stuck in the fence. And, you know, it's when you don't, then you really realize when you have nothing, then you really realize w w what you really mean to people. So I hear your point, my brother. What I think they should do, if they, if they get to go down on this internet service from the GTNT company, everybody could hold a smartphone and do their school work. <laughs> I, I could tell you some stories what some staffers there would have been complaining about, about even working there and having access to internet and so on. But that's another story for another day. Yeah, but uh, this, is, this is ridiculous for knowing your own guy in ease. I just feel like this. You That's a sad thing about it, right? You doing something, the telephone can't do nothing, then the extension B. Yeah, I hear you, I hear you, what and you're saying here. It them is. Are reap, them are reap money after this, uh, a guy in either. If I tell you, if I tell you that they're one of the top companies that has been uh, buying up our U.S. dollars and so on. Of course. And we, we should not be afraid, we shouldn't be ashamed, we shouldn't be scared to say what it is. At the end of the day, 
when you come and you're charging me for a quality, like if it, the Kaito News, if a day that we don't print an ad properly, we have to answer. We have to answer to Glenn Lyle. Yeah, or, or yeah. the people got to answer to Glenn. We have to answer to the customer why we didn't produce that. Maybe we'd have to probably uh, print the ad another day free of cost because yeah, that's what it is. You got you already charged. Man, but I don't understand. I don't understand. We have to get... I'm glad that... Let me tell you what it is. E-Networks, I asked, I called E-Networks, and he wasn't in, in our area yet, and I happened to get a, a, a um, wireless service because of the net that uh, gt and I was forced to stay home because of COVID. And I needed to do the radio program from home, and I had to get a wireless. I had to call, and I had to beg the guy. <laughs> but let me tell you this. The, 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 the service that you get from E-Networks... It's super. It's fantastic. Far better than gt &T. No, and No, and you know, these are the kind of services. It's as if what gt &T is telling the people of Guyana, to hell with you, that you don't deserve the respect as a citizen of Guyana. That's what they're saying. You know, me does always tell them that personally. They say that we out here, dollar and ten, ten and five cent, I'll give you one pocket. Uh -huh. We need you as much you need me more. And you should try to give us mm -hmm. our service. Mm -hmm. All right, and then. You get to ask for your right, then, for job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't think. Even in the other companies. We even have some local companies here who believe that you, you're, doing them, you're doing them a favor by giving them your business. If I had to get another water company, I presume we're going to go elsewhere. But we don't have a choice. We stuck with GWI. We stuck with GPL. <coughs> and it looks as if um, the monkey around our back, to use a famous phrase of a former president, the monkey around our back has to be gt &T because I think it was um, Barjack Dio when he was president. He wanted to do away with gt and A lot of people were suspicious of it, but guess what? In his wisdom, in his wisdom, he realized the danger when you headed into a modern society of having mm -hmm. one company. And here we have the pandemic, which is clearly exposing us. Yes, yeah, really. And the next thing I would like to say to Guyanese is let us come out. And... Go out. Don't feel if you don't have the symptoms, go out and make a check. You don't know who have it or not. Well, if you hear, let me tell you, I'm not sure. I think it's over 1,000 persons is in the prison system. Let's do some math here. 1,000 persons in the prison system. And you have mm -hmm. over four prisons, right? You have Camp Street Prison. You have uh, Lusignan. You have Burbies, New Amsterdam there. You have uh, um, the one Mazaruni Prison, and you have one at Chimiri there. Yes. And imagine 120 out of that um, entire 1,000, which happens to just be Lusik Nan alone, happen to be <laughs> testing positive. You want to do the mad day and see how much of them would have actually been at Lusik Nan, and therefore what is not being said, how much of them actually tested positive out of the, the, the percentage here. I think maybe half of the prison population here. No, I'm not sure. I'm just showing these figures up in the air. We need to think, eh? But the, the, you can't blame jail. Jail too cluster up. Yes, it is something, and I, I am extremely scared of that. In right. the meantime, the, our people I continue think to do madness. The people should have free up themselves and come out now because at recent uh, few weeks back, I hear two fool was talking. At in them time, one person dead, but them should have been remembered. They didn't have the equipment. Right, 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 right. No, 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 you're, you're doing it now because people are coming across the border. The police are allowing them, the police turning in a blind eye. The minibus people are coming down here by the minibus loads and nobody's saying anything. If you see foreigners in the minibus, you would have remembered. Barbies is, uh, is protected because you, it's difficult for you to go past the bridge. There's no speedboat or anything. You may, no. may be able to slip it through but one, once in a while. Maybe if you one in a minibus and you're passing in a minibus. But guess what? It's going to be very, very difficult to slip past Barbies. So Barbies is going to be protected. But the, this Esquivo here and Demerara, you could come through from charity, jump in a speedboat on Superman, you're down in Georgetown. And that's if you bypass the charity authorities at Morawana. But you could also come through the Letham Trail. And you, if you come through from Brazil into the Letham Trail and you land in Linden, I think you're home. They say you're, you're home in Ghoul. Right? Right. Yes. God bless you, my brother. I hear you. Yeah, my brother. Take care. Good. Bye-bye. <laughs> So, very quickly, we have some messages here. Hi, good morning. Well, it's, it's good, good afternoon or good morning. I'm not sure. Um, 
I would like to get on. Um, hi, good afternoon, Mr. Leonard. Um, I'm from Glasgow, East Bank, Barbies. My father-in-law passed away in January of this year. My mother-in-law applied in March for her husband's survivor benefit, and everybody she made contact with, he always telling her, they're working on it, we call it, and never call back. Uh, this song's familiar, absolutely familiar. When she go to the NIS in New Amsterdam, they tell her that they're waiting on George Chung NIS to get back to them. And when she go to George Chung, they said they would get back to her. NIS is just getting us back and forth and no answers. And that is what our people in the end go through from time to time. Bad here, the Uncle Glenn should start up an internet service in um, uh, uh, George Chung, I think it is. An internet service business in the end, I'm not sure. Um, uh, so... The American cut off our uh, oil, the Chinese decimate our forests, the Russians pillage our bauxite, or the Canadians remove our gold, they take everything and leave us uh, behind. All of them are granted license to do this by our leaders. Our leaders have betrayed us. They, along with the foreign investors, wave before us the promise of jobs, asking, for, asking a desperate nation to settle for the crumbs which are offered. It's time to demand better from our leaders. It's time to reject the sweet talks. Uh, so that's interesting. It's coming there. Good day, Mr. Gildari. And this person sent a hundred times. Um, I'm not sure, was it? Um, good day, Mr. Gildari. How are you doing? I need to know if the CHMPA working on house lots in the remigrant scheme as yet. Um, I think they're looking at it. Um, I'm not sure what this person is. So you know Bloody Bar in the industry program, so you know Bloody Bar. I, I'm not sure what this person is writing here. All right. Good afternoon, bro. How are you doing? What can I say? Since March, no school work from anyone for our children yet. My kids are slow learners, so the TV is too fast for them. I could aff can't afford internet and don't have any device for them as yet. Um, uh, so uh, I have my phone, but the data done too fast. Please help them, bro. My, my number is so, so, so. This is a story Then kids are working in the market by selling our kids right to exam in school two days and don't get COVID-19. So the minister opened the school door. I don't know. I, it's badly written here, but I, I get the gist of it. Uh, people are really, really suffering. The Ministry of Work has to get jailed for the asphalt, uh, the asphalt racket. Um, Ramjitan used to sell gun lights for one million. Said within five days, the years, they'll raise to 40,000. The government should break the monopoly of gt and I hear you with that one, dear. Let me see what else they have here. So, awesome vibes to do my housework uh, from Coven John. Enjoying you guys. Good afternoon, Mr. Leonard. You're doing a great job for the people of Guyana. Locked in from Coven John, Ashma Bacchus. Thank you very much, dear Ashma. How are you doing? I hope I pronounced your name right. Good afternoon, sir. My mother of four living in Demerara River. No access to the internet. Cannot afford uh, data on my phone to keep up with the schoolwork. I don't know how you can help. I'm not sure gt and needs to get done there, but it's something we need to bring the plight of the people out there. The west side of the Demerara Harbor Bridge is closed uh, at uh, 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. to accommodate two lane going west. How will the people abide with curfew? Or why not uh, 4 p.m. to 5 p.m.? That way both sides have one hour to meet the destination. Yesterday, I think was a classic example. Your view. I agree with that. I think... Um, I, I think looking at the options, the Harbour Bridge came up with this afternoon um, two-lane two business, which is going uh, to the west side, and it closed off the eastern side. They did that uh, in the time when we had no pandemic and there was no um, uh, uh, curfew at that point in time. It needs to be looked at, and there's a very good point that's raised uh, by the people there. But I don't think that the police officer could be stopping you if you're on the road because of the bridge and the, the congestion is there. Good, uh, good morning to, uh, well, I think, I'm not sure. This is for another one. All right. In the meantime, let me see some other. Before we head back out to our lines, you know, we got to read our people before they get upset with us. Good afternoon, son. I'm proud of you. Keep up the good work. Our country needs leaders like you. Um, I'm somebody's son now. Thank you very much for that. I, I appreciate it. Um, all right. I'm going to read this. Um and let me answer this. Leonard, you're a real hypocrite. You know, guy. I mean, you're talking about boss sort of a migrant coming together. What about when you all guy and he's going all over the world, especially Suriname? Let me answer this to the CDOT who is saying this thing here. Or let me, just, uh, let, let me just say that. If we're talking about people coming to our country, you can't go to, to the United States unless 
We're not saying that migrants shouldn't come here. You've got to hear this. Because that's absolute. If, you, if you're saying that Gildavi is a hypocrite here. This thing is very, very clear. If you come in into a country, whether it's Trinidad, whether it's any country, you cannot just walk in there and just say that you want to just go into the country. There has to be, there has to be some kind of um, process or a system that is going to be controlled. Ghana has opened the borders to Venezuelans coming to our country. We're not refusing them. But when you have the borders that are supposed to be closed, that has a pandemic, it takes a different context. It takes a different context. So when you have policemen uh, uh, facil facilitating that, you don't know who is coming into your country, and we have a COVID situation there. What is so hypocritical about that? You have to have some kind of control mechanism that at the various areas that somebody could say, look, you're coming from there, I allow you to come in, but let me test the pressure. If nobody knows that you're coming in here, wherever you're coming from, and nobody knows, what you're doing is exposing the people of Guyana to the situation here. So maybe I went overboard there a little, but guess what? Um, well, this person seems to be on a thing. How do you know that they're walking in without papers, you dumbo? Well, I'm not sure. You, you could say, say whatever you want to say, sir. At the end of the day, we have a right to protect our borders. When you go into Trinidad, they don't allow you into Trinidad like that. You have to go with, with the documents. If you go into any other places, we're not saying close the borders. What we're saying, you come into the country, but this has to be controlled. If you're coming over the border, that's why they close the borders for the pandemic. And so what this person is saying here, um, uh, they uh, keep educating the Guyanese pop populace about the conditions of this country and the aims of these deceitful investors, communists, capitalists, and imperialists. More article plus daily programming to, is, to address these issues. If we continue like this, we'll have a Chinese president soon, not Arthur Chong, and this is coming from somebody there. Um, and so we have a couple of people raising issues there. But to come back, we cannot have any, I don't care how you say that we went to other places. I'm saying that those countries opened the border, but there was a system in which they vet you when you get into the system. And we thank you for that. But when you have a system of pandemic here, you cannot have the borders. So that's why we close the borders in the first place. We close it. We close all the businesses again. We put curfew in place. It's all a part and a menu of measures in which you have to protect it. So I don't understand um, what you're saying there. Uh, I think what this gentleman is saying there, that you should allow the borders to open and uh, uh, allow the people to come wild west. We can't do that, sir. You have a government that has to protect the people. And it's imperative that we screen. Maybe in, in good times we could probably have it open, but even that you've got to be very careful with. You should bring the people in. You should charge someone. There's a processing fee. The American, if you're going for a visa, it's 100 and something dollars that you have to pay. You have to pay the embassy. The American embassy is making a lot of money from processes of visa applications and other fees that they're taking in. As a country, we have the right. It's a lot of money. But there's a call in line. Good afternoon, caller. You're near. Good afternoon, caller. You're near. Good afternoon, sir. How are you doing? How are you doing, my brother? I'm okay. Um, some people, they don't answer them. Every uh -huh. country has rules. They don't go in a country just to... Even if it's like backtrack this last year. So I don't know which one is happening. But coming back to the point, um, one of the things that the government of Guyana has not done, not just this one, our government of Guyana, since Clico, where NIS had a great investment in and lost, it puts NIS under pressure. So even when they keep sending people back and forth, it's literally they can't pay everybody at the same time. They don't have money. And the government has not paid attention to the fact that NIS has a cash flow problem. And the problem is if you check when NIS was establishing the Anna, when you check today's date, you will have thousands of people eligible at this time for their pension. And they literally cannot meet all of that. And no government, all the governments have poured money in all of these places, give concession to foreign companies, but none has said to NIS, we're going to give you $10 billion to balance out your book. If they did it, I have never seen it in any paper, it's heard it in any news. Mm -hmm. There's one. Two, as it relates to these foreign companies, for instance, I heard in the news, this company that bought over, um, I think it's Ghana Gold, you think? Yeah. Are, look, are looking to get rid of Guyanese workers. One of the problems is I like I can't understand why no government is filling this in these people's heads. An international agreement is there. 
that if you come into any foreign country, at least 50% of your workforce have to be from that local constituent. And if they don't have the necessary training, you have to train them. Mm -hmm. You can't say you're knocking out Guyanese. But these companies come and they do the same company that got a problem with the airport. They're Gold Field Inc. They're Smoothie Town. They're Pegasus. And at the end of the day, they're doing substandard work and still getting more contracts and still allowing to do things. We got the oil company. We had the Russians, now we got the Chinese. And guess what? Everybody indeed gets our wealth and we don't get it. Mm -hmm. I work every day for $255 an hour. You check the house, 12 hours I got work for get a, li a little living wage. Mm -hmm. People coming and going with my wealth. I got gold, I got bauxite, I got diamond, I got island. I am still working $250 a day. Wow, oh, what's the point? What's the point of we having this wealth? Better stay here. Let them go, let me stop. It doesn't make sense that they come in and they pass in and we still stop them. I listen to your comments off here. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jay. Sorry. And I fully agree with that. If you have a company, when you give out your resources into a country, and um, before we do that, let me call out a, a 718 718-878-718-878-0364. I don't know who this idiot is, but um, you don't come onto this line here, sir. You got to be very respectful like the rest of the folks, and you guys take note of the number. It has to be an idiot. And so uh, uh, we are going to have our people with respect on this line here, have respect for them. Um, they, are, they have been a good set of folks, and so we are treating them right, and we will continue to treat them right and with respect And when it comes to our country. But to come back to with us, um, what a good quality I would have said in a very short while with regards to gold fields and so on. When you ask companies to come here, it's not only to provide employment, but it's to make sure that our taxes and so on, that we benefit in some way, because we might as well take over the business, ask for a loan from some country, bring in some management, and we own it. There's a, there's a couple of options that you do. So this company came here, got a bunch of um, um, uh, concessions. They got the equipment. They would have gotten duty-free concession. They would have gotten tax-free breaks. And they came here, started production in 2016, very early uh, 2016, commercial production, that is. Um, fast forward, they ran into money problem. And Guyana did not have a say. What they did is sell, sold the shares to this Chinese company for uh, almost 300-something million dollars. Get what Guyana got out of that deal? Zilch. And so they're here, and there's an application, apparently, for to bring in 200 something at least that's what the public uh, the private sector commission has written to the president asking him to look into this one of his members have complained about it and so when you have companies that are coming here and believe that they could do what they want to do and not use our locals then what benefit are we getting that's the whole point of it and i agree with you um when when companies come here we have to make sure that we see um, in our own little ways, how we could benefit. Ultimately, the deal has to be that Guyana benefits. It cannot be that you alone benefit in, and that's what the Trinidad Prime Minister Keith Rowley would have said. If there's a deal that is sitting on the table and one person benefited, is it a deal? It's an agreement? It can't be that. We have to sit at the table. You walk away happy. I walk away happy. And there's respect and there's love in the room. And so there's no love at the moment what is happening here. We have one company coming in here and they've been taking out our box site and never declaring a profit. And this is um, um, a Russell company. A Russian company comes here and they, they are um, they are taken out. They have been taking out our, um, our wealth. And guess what? They're saying they're not making a profit. For 10 to 12 years that you're here, you're not making a profit. And they did not, uh, the authorities, the regulators did not see it fit to pull this company in and says, bring your books here. If you're not operating and making a profit, how are you still operating? So these are the kind of questions that we could ask. But at the same time, if you want to come take over this country, this company here, and uh, you decide to do this, there's something that the Ministry of Labor and a couple of the other um, regulators can do to halt the situation. So we've got to be very, very serious. We're bringing in uh, companies to take over, cart out our uh, resources, but at what cost? Is it at the cost of our people? So we have to be very, very careful in that um, um, today. Uh, my name is, um, we live, uh, um, this is, okay, somebody's asking for some help here. Um, Okay, thank you for connecting. Let me see what is this here. I was subsequent so we had PCR but I'm not sure what's this message here. But in the meantime, before we go back to the callers, let me just read a couple of messages very quickly. Um, 
GT and T has uh, sent us, uh, you know, we they've sent us, uh, uh, they, every day they're sending us messages, uh, SMS us and whatever. And they said, get us on WhatsApp on 6240248. Let me see. 640, yes. 640-2448. Yet another way to reach us. And uh, so GT and T, GT and T is saying that if you want to get through to them on WhatsApp, six four zero twenty four twenty eight. So you could reach them there. I'm sharing it with you. Um, good afternoon, Leonard. Just want people to understand that when PPP make that toll, it's pension promise. COVID was no way in sight. People need to be thankful um, for the world is in a crisis, and there's somebody coming to the defense of the government and that. Hi, Mr. Leonard. Um, uh, I'm from Laloni. When the PPP was in gov power, we were given a bus to transport. And this is, I think, you know, I did read that message sometime before. Um, let's go back to the line. So we have another caller in line. Yes, good afternoon, caller. You're here. Oh, we missed that one. Good day. I'm enjoying your program in my work uh, shop in Coven John East Coast, Demerara. Good day to you, sir. What kind of workshop you got there? I hope that you, you it's a body workshop. You can do some business with you. All right. Uh, there's another call in line. Go right ahead, caller. You're here. Mr. Leonard? Yes, it is. Go right ahead, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Sir, I just want to say this, uh, um, you know, NIS contribute to a lot of people's death in this country. And why I'm saying that? Because sometimes when you listen and you hear the results that they give to you, when you ask them for your contribution, and when they give to you, you could fall dead right there. If there's a heart attack, you can pick up right away there. Because you know why? I'm telling you this, that some people have so many years working with companies, have the contribution. When you go to NIS, nothing is there for you. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to, right now, I work 10 years with guys, to cool. From 1994 to 2004, I worked two years before I took. I worked two years with a giant company, right? I work with the next company now, what, 18 months now, and I went to them two Fridays ago, and they say I only, only have four contributions. Mm -hmm. And it took me all an ass yard and gave me a new one with a different number. And um, and so you missed out on that contribution, all those contributions? All those contributions. They say I only have four. I don't know what to say to you. Um, I don't know what to say to you there because uh, I've been trying to call. I, I even tried to call back uh, the, the good PRO, but I, I, she hasn't been responding to me. I'm going to have to call the GM this afternoon uh, for them to, to see if there's some other ways. that Because I've been asking for them to provide me some other numbers. Apparently, they're very busy at what they're doing, and um, and we've offered them this radio program here. They did uh, promise it started out pretty good, but I think they're very busy doing whatever it is that they're doing there. But I'm going to talk to the GM this afternoon and see maybe if there's some other ways that we could get some other numbers that people could really complain. Okay, sir. Thank you. God, God bless you. So, in the meantime, while that, that uh, caller there, while we wait on some other caller, it's another question that has been asked. Good afternoon, Leonard. Does all the schools in Guyana have internet service? If so, some of our kids who have no uh, access to internet at all can go there and staggered session to get their studies done. This is something that we've been thinking about too, but I'm not so s sure whether the ministry has given permission to the kids to go to school. Um, the schools have to be fumigated. It has to be um, sanitized. Um, before the kids go back there and so it's a whole month of stuff that needs to play, play in there but I, I agree with you if uh, there's a central point where there's internet um, but these schools doesn't have like a big Wi-Fi system if you put about 10 persons on it um, it's not gonna it's not gonna allow you um, I think it's normal DSL normal speed you cannot have about five or six person um, that is gonna be there on zoom if you're in a different program maybe one computer or a big screen or something. So there's a lot of thought that needs to go in there that uh, maybe for something like that to, to work. Um, and so let me see. Uh, the good day, I'm working and listening uh, at NIS. Listen to you guys. Don't mention that. Um, <laughs> my apologies. I, by the time I read it here. But look, we need to get ourselves in order. The NIS seems to be a, a very big deal. Um, uh, it's a very big deal for the people. And this thing is very, very simple. I said it before, I'm going to say it again. 
NIS need to have some kind of um, customer service um, uh, specialist area that can take complaints. I'm not sure if they have it there, but whatever is happening is very clear that the people are not getting the service that they're getting. If you're making a complaint, and there are a number of complaints that we have in here, it's obvious that they're not, uh, how you say it, they, they're not getting the attention or no, somebody's not giving them a feedback for the complaints that they have. So NIS need to do something. Either you have a number that you could call into that somebody's speaking on the switchboard that you could have a call center like what they say, and here's a reference number for you. I'm going to check on this back and let's call you back and we have within a couple of days to do it. But NIS is not like GPL. GPL, according to the license that government has given them, every year they got to go before the Public Utilities Commissioner Commission as a regulator, as a regulator, and they have to uh, report to them how many blackouts they had, why the blackouts this year is more than last year, that they had a problem, how do they intend to bring down the number of blackouts, how do they intend to reduce um, the number of electricity or the, the quantity of electricity theft that is happening right now, how, do they, how long do they take to respond to a new uh, applications for connections, those kind of things that they got to do. NIS doesn't fall under that. They have a board of directors, which is probably going to be led by a, a very senior official within the government, and NIS is going through this, and they're struggling. We know what the challenges are. However, not uh, you know addressing the customer service side of things is not something that uh, should be acceptable. So they need to listen, and they need to, to, to be taken. Um, um, the guy that just called and says that four contributions of NIS for him, uh, it could be that the employer uh, did not uh, um, did, did not take all the, took all the money, but did not pay. And it's something that we have to, a lot of employers, so, and I think this is where NIS need to get a little more serious too. You have uh, especially security forms that we receive in a lot of complaints about. These guys are doing a whole bunch of stuff. At the end of the month, you get a pay slip says they've taken out $2,000 out of everything to send to NIS. And when you go to NIS, no money is there, but they've deducted out from you. So that's robbery, right? And NIS need to get hold of these uh, employers and start charging them high profile. You need to rush a couple of the owners, and those don't do it to the managers, rush a couple of the owners through the court and let it go into the newspaper or let it make the TV news that the Gildari... Gildari does not pay the NIS for his workers. We need to embarrass people, you know, Raj? Embarrass people and people are going to wake up and smell the coffee um, and smell it in the thing. So this is a Wake Up Gain show on Kaicho Radio 99.1, 99.5. We're coming to you live on Kaicho Radio on Facebook and also on uh, YouTube, Kaicho Radio live stream. I want to say um, uh, good day and uh, I hope that Shana Lal, Lal is not forgetting us at the moment um, that we expecting that the body celebrations is going to be right here in Kaicho Radio. We expect some goodies, uh, Tishana. I hope that you're downstairs and that you're listening. So I, I hope that you're having a blast for your birthday, dear, to our director, Tishana Lal. So we go back to the lines again. Good afternoon, calling you on the air. Hello? Yes, good afternoon. You're on the air. Go right here. Good afternoon. Leonard? Yes, it is, sir. Good afternoon, my friend. Good afternoon. I heard somebody call about NIS. I would just like to add my little piece as well to that. Uh -huh. Yes, I'm an NIS pensioner, by the way. Now, one of the things I observe over the years is that people have to check on the contribution record regularly, maybe every year, possibly every two years. Don't wait until when you're ready to go off then, because you'll have a series of problems as one. Number two, if person change job, one job to the other, and they change the NIS number, definitely they will have that kind of problem the guy was uh, complaining about. The third thing is that if you spell your name a little differently, maybe a letter missing or a letter add on to the name, those can cause your contribution to go elsewhere as well, too. Yeah. Right? Um, I, I, I started contributing since day one, 1969. I was 60 plus post, a pension, as I said, right? Mm. In 1960, I lost approximately 250 contributions over the years. Wow. Back oh. in those days, they used to have the stamp system where every day they put on stamps on the card and regularly you're going to sign the card. So, well, I lost quite a number, but I couldn't push it further. I ended up with about uh, 40 or 50 contributions. Mm -hmm. Right? I didn't work my entire um, working life in Guyana. I was out, uh, out of Guyana for a period of time as well. Anyhow, that's my little contribution advice to people, whoever in the workforce right now, 
check regularly on your NIS records. I and, think you can right, go right. online. You I can go you online. Can... You need to go online, get yes, the ID I card think number. I can go check regularly and any questions, try to take it up early. Don't wait until pension age. You might be too disappointed when the time comes. You might not get the right amount. Right. right? So that, 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 just that, that my little contributions after. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you very much, there, my brother. And you're, you're right. And, and that, that uh, the caller there has reminded us. If you know somebody, everybody knows somebody who got a computer or, or something that they could go online with. And so what you need to do, you go and you have your NIS number and you could just tell them your NIS number and there's some other requirements that you think. And you could punch in and you could see how much um, um, uh, contributions that you would have made. And of course, if, you, if your employer is, is shafting you, you would be able to raise that with them and say, hey, wait a minute, what is happening here? And you could be able to, to, to arrest that very early instead of waiting until you're 60. And let me tell you this, it's a very good conversation that we have in here. Uh, why would we, we, people are beginning to wake up and realize that, you know, we wasted, I, growing up, you see plenty of poison. I see we body workshop and, and, and you know, so many things, uh, shopkeepers and so on. Everybody is there and they're doing the little thing and they're not paying the NIS. And then all of a sudden they wake up 60 years old, can barely help themselves and they start, uh, you know, depending on the children that they have uh, because they need the money and then they don't have an NIS thing. And so they're stuck with getting an old age pension somewhere along the line of just 20 something thousand dollars and that's it. So it's very important that we start relooking and start, uh, you know, like the, you get up in the morning, you brush your teeth and you take a shower or whatever it is, as part of your working life, as part of the minute that you start earning income, automatically you should be paying something to NIS, it's the law. But uh, if you just take it for granted, man, I need to keep this money instead of paying them. I don't deal with that. Um, we need to start looking at it from a different perspective because at the end of the day, what you're going to end up with is both your NIS and the old age pension, whatever help you're going to get. Now, let's assume that our oil kicks off and God bless this good country of ours and we could get some oil money. That would be icing on the cake. And so that's how you start looking and this is how we, start, uh, we have to start planning as people as we go forward in this country things like pension it is very important things like medical insurance very important we a lot of people um, don't have those kinds of uh, cushion uh, safety net to fall back on and so you just wake up all of a sudden and you realize you can't go because you don't have an insurance you can't go to a private hospital you're stuck with the the, the public system which is a good thing that Gan is offering because a lot of people would not have been able to afford what about those people that, uh, you know, they go in? And somebody did call me this morning um, complaining about a chest uh, clinic or somewhere, I think, along um, South Road there. They went there, and uh, it's a place where they give the food handler certificate. And uh, the, the person said that when they went there, they take quotas, uh, like 50 persons or so, and uh, they, they allow the persons, the other persons would have to wait. And it's a very frustrating experience. So they need people to look into that system of the chest clinic where they give the food handler certificate. And maybe uh, the person recommended or called or urged that uh, the Ministry of Health could probably look into some other measures and where there's not one place alone that is centralized. And it's like the same thing too. I think we have three passport office, offices now, or at least one, two, yeah, at least three, four passport offices now. The one in Georgetown, one in Burbies, one in Esquim, and one in um, Linden. So what you have there is, is just reduce the need for you to travel all the way to come to Georgetown. You just have to wait a couple of days to get the passport. The problem that we have right now is that NIS, although they have branches all over the place, it looks as if somebody's not doing these things. It's just, let's work nine to five, and uh, you know, they need to start revamping the system and start serving as if they, they're serving these things, get everything online. Um, I think there were some big projects that they're talking about, about uh, using uh, the internet uh, and connect all the government agencies so that when you go in there you could be able to access your records at GRE, you could be able to access your records at NIS, you could be able to do your banking, you could be able to do so many things at one, all at one place, a single window um, uh, stuff there. So let's start looking at that and let uh, maybe talk a little more about that because these are things that matters. When you talk quality of life, one of the big things that we look at in India and we look at um, uh, overseas is services that are being offered to the people. I remember going to Trinidad, was it this year or last year? 
I went there for a day, and I, uh, when I went there, I applied for an international driver's license. I went there, also you from Guyana, and we paid some money, of course, and I got an international driver's license. I presented my Guyanese passport and the, my driver's license and some pictures and so on. And it worked like a breeze. We got it within the year, within an hour we were in there. Four of us got through, out of there, went and had some lunch, and we jump on a plane and come back to Guyana. This happened, I think, either this year or last year. It gives you the idea, so why can't we have something like that in Guyana? So it is things that you wish for. When you talk about services in Guyana, these are things that you wish for. Do we have another call in line? Yes, good afternoon, caller, you're near. Okay, we would have missed that. Let's go back to um, what we are coming to. It seems like some sort of sabotage going on in all these government um, uh, agencies since the new government took over. Why are there so many issues all of a sudden? I don't think it's uh, so much of that. I think what people are doing now is start realizing that things that are what is important to them that they would have taken for granted, poor services at uh, government agencies and so on. Um, I must tell you that the passport office has improved significantly. I like what I'm seeing there. I love the initiative that we would have branched off to other areas as well. Um, but I think it's more that people are becoming very much aware of what uh, it is that is affecting them, and they're becoming they're becoming a little more um, uh, sensitized and aware, and they want to get uh, fast action, which is a good thing. There's an awakening in us. Let us awaken ourselves because this is the Wake Up Gay and Show. I'm your host, Leonard Gildari. Go right ahead. There's another call in the air. Good afternoon, caller. You're in the air. Go right ahead. Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Is this Gildari? Yes, it is. You're on the air. Go right ahead. Good afternoon. So I hear what happened. Um, I see this TV program that we had going on here for the school today. It's a connection of the slow learners during prime time. You the teach this. The explaining, you are not writing at the same time because you listen to the explanation. So mm. by the time you finish the start to write now, it's automatic go on to another question. So that question gone. Mm -hmm. And when you're a slow learner, slow learner, it's very hard for you to pick it up. That's one of the disadvantages of the TV program. Mm -hmm. The other thing is not everybody have access to a device and internet now. Mm -hmm. Right? Well, I'm on, I'm on with uh, Pre Manic Chan. I'm sending her a message right now, Minister Pre Manic Chan and the Minister of Education, about the speed. A lot of people would have complained. I did send it to a couple of other officials, and I'm sending the complaint to her now because you're not the first one complaining about the speed in which you know the teacher talks and that there's no way um, that you could go back. And uh, somebody was complaining. If a teacher who is a mom complained about. Um, some of the attitude of some of the teachers, and I don't think it's so much of attitude. I think that people don't really understand some of the things that they're doing, that the kids, uh, it's not a, a normal classroom, so you've got to change up your system. And it's very hard. Yes. People go through it right now, straight into it, you know, you didn't get a training or nothing, straight into it. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And the other thing is, is that um, right now, you've been moving about and you see kids on the road. Uh -huh. You see kids in the market, you see the supermarket. You see kids on the road regularly, right? Even though it's a pandemic, we only kids on the road regularly. Well, we should open school like one, one subject for a day for the kids because right now lesson going on at some private teachers. One in Lagrange is $500 per subject for two hours. I have three kids. Got to go to that lesson, $6,000 a week. That's very hard. Um, I, I, I don't know what to say there because let me tell you something. I think for the pandemic situation, they, they have to... Con I think what, what it did is they say, let us try this out and see how it goes. But I think they have to come back within a month or so and relook at it. Somebody has to give them a report and relook at it and see whether it's been working well. But based on what we see now, it's obvious a lot of kids are slipping through the cracks. Exactly. So the children leave the television and go and do their own thing, especially parents working. Yes, yes. You understand? It's, it's a very difficult thing, but the alternative to that is putting them back in the classroom. And let me tell you, thing, that's not an alternative. That's not an alternative at all right now. This situation know, is bad. I know what you're saying. We're going to end up with a couple of kids in coffins, and that's not something that I wanted to... to to, to, to even contemplate? Well, somehow or the other, right? We have to get these kids 
Ella, they do back the whole work that they finish doing already to revise it back and keep their brain function on that part or something. Because as you, your brain lays up, you know what happened here. Yeah, you yeah. Fall asleep. I, I think, I think, and, and one other thing, and I think uh, I, I be have one of the persons who's listening and looking here, RNJJ, and that person's recommending that you know, and it's something that we know our parents because this is desperate. This is desperate times. We have to really look into ways how we could, uh, you know, go the extra mile with our kids. And I know kid parents have been doing tremendously. Um, they've been doing a tremendous job, and um, even even tolerating what would have transpired this last couple of months. I know it's we are still struggling to make a living, so the the challenges are very real. But we got to go that extra mile for them because the alternative of not doing that is is just too um, it's just too terrible to think. I know, I know, I know what you're saying. Because right now, I got me on, I sell it on the road, and I got me on with a grade four book, uh-huh. doing back a grade four work. Even if he is in part one, but I refresh it, he brings back on grade four. No, it's a good thing, because um, I'm going to tell you a story, maybe after you hang up there, about what happened to my little daughter there, um, which is something that we got to do. But we got to consistently, we can't drop the ball. This thing here is ongoing. This pandemic, it ain't going to go away for just now. So our entire way of life, the way that we do school and the way that we govern, the way that we manage, everything has to be different until maybe God bless that we get over it. And we have to get over it or, or else uh, this thing, we're going to, uh, we, our economy and everything, the demands, everything is going to be damaged. Uh, but... Uh, it is something one, you have to keep it up. One more thing, sir. One more thing. Okay. Um, minister is printing some papers so, and um, distribute to the children then. We have these school buses. Can pick these kids up without interacting with anybody else and take them to collect the stuff and let teachers overlook at them one time and those kind of things. You know, we got to do something. Yes, it is. It is. I'm not sure. Um, did you get any workbook or anything from the teachers yet? Nothing. Now, since March, nothing. Um, a connection with no teacher as yet. I'm I know they. I think yet. they're busy. They're busy printing out those work materials now, and I think they. I think they should have waited. But I think. I think I'm they. Get in contact with your teacher. And what the teacher saying? Okay then. And you take care. Have a blessed day. Keep on doing good work. Thank you, dear ma'am. Thank you very much, dear. And so. We have to, as a parent, um, and the, 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 I, it's good to hear from that uh, lady there that she's uh, while she's earning a living, she has her kids and um, uh, she has a kid there with his workbook or her workbook there. Um, you know, you have to consistently be behind your kids to make sure that they don't, you know, be disciplined about it. My little daughter, I uh, think after yesterday, she did very well. Congratulations, little baby. Um, she. She got second in our school, and she got, I think, bishops. She missed QC, my old school, by two marks, um, and she was happy. But when her brother called, her brother called because they were on the road, and her brother called and um, says, um, told his mom, you know, um, she got another school, a lower school, and she started crying. This is a girl who don't normally cry, um, was eating her food, closed up the food bowl and whatever, and... Um, she started crying, and then he called back a little later and says, you know, I'm just pranking you. You got bishops, and she was all happy. But this morning, she woke up, and she says she's going back and look at her um, or two years ago uh, lessons and so open her books and go through them because she needs to get herself familiar because when school um, is going to be reopened in whatever format it is, she wants to be ready and not be left behind or going through stuff that uh, she should have known and uh, she's just brushing up on them and that's what we need to do while school is has not been reopened uh, we have uh, we have to have the kids go through the old lessons and so on brush themselves up it is part of the you know let us just don't drop the ball we have to find ways and keep the ball rolling that's what we have to do so while we may not see school open or while we may might not have anything happening the, the kids would have the old school books the old workbooks let them go through it you got to be on top of them you're going to be doing some yelling you're going to be doing some scolding you're going to be doing some um, threats to the kids uh, well you have different way of managing them um, uh, sometimes i just raise my voice and says what's going on here and uh, they get the drift of it. Uh, they have to get the act together with regard to, you know, there's a time to play and there's a time to get serious with books. Um, so we have to all play a role. And whatever role that we were playing before March uh, the second, before um, when this, uh, before March when this pandemic and the measures that would have come, 
um, you have to uh, pretend that you're going to do double of that now. And it's going to take a toll on us as parents. But uh, because of the situation, we have no alternative. We have to make sure that we do whatever is the correct thing. We pull out all the stops to ensure that our kids benefit. They are the important ones. Um, uh, somebody's asking, what is the number to call you on your life, please? It's 226-7453, 7453 um, um, I'm on the air every single day, Monday to Friday, Saturdays and Sundays, no, I have a lot of work to do. Still, I'm a reporter. I still uh, work in the newsroom. So when I finish here, I'm getting down there. So it's 226-7453 there. So let me see some other one. Good afternoon, sir. A dispatcher at a, at a taxi base took over $100,000 from a driver and promised to give them $35,000 in four days. It's now over eight days and we have not received our money. We back. I uh, uh, was told uh, that we can't get back our money. I'm not sure. Is this a Ponzi scheme that you're talking about here, person? If you guys are, are involved and, um, you know, and um, has given somebody money, do not uh, give anybody your money and then they promise to give you so much money. That's nonsense. Um, that's a Ponzi scheme. Good afternoon, my friend. Um, my friend's son right coming entrance and he got three center mark and they say he passed to go to BV community. Do you know this mark work for the common entrance? No, I have absolutely no idea. I'm going to have to find out. I think there's some cut off community schools and so on. I got to get that formula. I'm going to try to read it back to you guys. Um, good afternoon, everyone there. Um, please. Um, um, okay, thank you very much from that person there. Good day to you. A lot of good days. Everybody is, is saying good day to everybody here. Before we go back to the line, let me see if there's some other persons. Good afternoon, Leonard. I listen to you every day. I have family of four, my two children, since COVID-19. They haven't been able to school because I have to send them back home from work every six months. Now, my TV is broken. I can't get the learning. How can you help me in some way? Um, okay, let me see. Six. All right. I hear you there. I'm going to get someone to contact you there. Let's see if we can do anything. Do we have another call in line? Yes. Good afternoon, caller. You on the air. Go right ahead. Good afternoon. How are you doing? There's a, not bad. There's a small village in New Amsterdam. Uh huh. About five miles out of New Amsterdam called Sandford Village. Was it? Sandford. 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 Yeah, that's West, West Kanji. Yes, sir. My brother, for, for nine months now, those stable phone not working. And the thing is, it. When the bill come, please pay your rental. If you <laughs> okay, please pay your rent. Nine months now, buddy, and a lot of people in New York with the same problem. The telecom stay up, but cable and cable and cable. Um, PUC, you need to get out the PUC right away and make a complaint because if GTT is not doing it, um, you need to make a complaint to that. My brother? Uh -huh. What do what, what you say? There's another story by itself. Uh, now, um, they say, who feels it, knows it. Uh -huh. Right in on the quarantine, there's a mother crying, her, crying, crying for her return of her daughter. For her return of her 13-year-old daughter. The daughter probably gone away. It's alleged. It's alleged that she gone away with some sergeant's son, some police sergeant's son. Oh, my gosh. I have an opinion. If the sergeant's son gone with this, with this girl... The sergeant should be dismissed. Some disciplinary action should take against him. And when the girl, when they find the girl, send her to girls' school. Uh -huh. You, you got to do something. This thing happened too long, too long. Police, then a house, and a lot of slackness going on. You going to tell me he ain't know what's what, what going on? Mm -hmm. That's why I say, who feels it knows it, buddy. That is why I don't want to say suicide can't done. Thank you, buddy. God bless you. God bless you, dear. So I want to say congratulations. I haven't gotten the details yet from the schools. Um, let me see if I pull up everything here. Um, uh, tune in. Let me see. Lead up. Uh, all right. I haven't gotten it, but I want to say congratulations to all the students, all the students who would have done well at the CSEC examinations. I know the results are out today, and they would have come hours after the grade six exams would have come out. Regardless of how you would have done, 
uh, want to say congratulations. We were all winners in this, and uh, maybe there's another opportunity. There's, there are always other opportunity for us to um, pick up ourselves, and, uh, and we're all winners. So let's congratulate. There's no uh, somebody who's a little better, the 1% or the 2%. I would have seen that. We, we all have done well, and so there's another opportunity for you to pick yourself up and uh, to even do it better than the last time. So that's how you look at it. How is the glass? Is it half full or half empty? Some people are going to tell you different things. So we have to uh, continuously engage our children, continuously encourage them and tell them that you've done well, baby. We're going to do better the next time. That's how we have to do it. Have a very positive attitude. Have a very positive energy there. And I think Raj is going to kill me there. Um, uh, so Raj, how are you doing? You haven't been talking a lot to the people, telling them anything about... Uh, what is happening in Hindi or anything? You got you got to be a little engaging, you know. You're teaching me to do a couple of things, and you also have to teach the people of Ghana too. Tell them a little about um, uh, when you expect to go back in India um, about some of the food that you could probably introduce to Guyana. Raj is all the way from India, and he's uh, uh, he's doing an excellent job there with the controls, uh, very much on time. Uh, very disciplined with his work ethics and so on. A better value for better protection. Get your ship and cargo covered with us today. CARICOM General Insurance Company, Inc. at 121 Regenton, Arnock Street, to better serve you. You can now purchase your insurance online from the comfort of your home. Telephone 225-1787 or 269-0020. CARICOM General Insurance Company, Inc. And so in the meantime, dear... I want to say it's, we have a couple of minutes more and we want to uh, ensure that we get those calls in. Let me just make sure that we haven't missed any of them. Um, okay. And, uh, okay, so some people here asking for iPads. And so we've asked and we are getting ready to bring some. And so you guys just be around there. I didn't see anything on that today. A lot of people have been calling. Good day. I enjoy programming my workshop. I think this person have a furniture shop, a good day to that furniture shop there in Coven John. Uh, they're tuned in, they're linked up with us here. Good day. Do we still have to wait on an announcement from the Ministry of Education for kids who did not write common entrance? Or should we go to their office? Uh, do, don't we have to get a document from the Ministry of School? For the school in the area the kids will be going thank you for your input well they have not made an announcement as yet i think um in a very short while they're going to do that as soon as we get that but are we going to ensure that we raise this issue with them um to make sure that it comes out in the form they would have to tell us uh, there's a number of kids if you're not familiar with what this person is talking about there's a number of kids uh, uh, whose parents uh, uh, didn't want to take the chance for them to write the the, the common entrance or the grade six exams as we know it and of course some other exams and it says that if you did not write it we're going to see some placement exam and put you in a school uh, within your area until such time that maybe you could write an assessment and maybe we could put you in a school that you we believe that you have been assessed for they have not spoken about that i think it's a little too early in the game let's see what happened do we have another call raj good afternoon caller you're the air good afternoon good afternoon sir repeat. yes sir you're on the air Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. Good afternoon, Mr. Gildari. Yes, it is. Go right ahead, sir. Yes. This is um, concerning the aisle. Uh -huh. Now, if we go back a slight issue and then fast forward. Now, in, in um, Burnham time, he had uh, given concession to a Canadian mining um, exploration company. Now, when he gave this, fast forward in it, they did the necessary things and it was complete. Now, they decided they give a report that we have aisle but not in commercial quantities. Mm -hmm. Now, the point is that at the time we had a function, and I told one of the geologists, I don't believe it. And he smiled. He said, why? I said, because according to physics, if you have X amount of, if you have X amount of pressure within certain things, it must give out one time. Now, various parts of Guyana, they were aisle when persons digging for something, it was flushing out. Now in Joshua here, we had a, a, a aisle was gushing out in somebody land. Mm -hmm. Now, Burnham, we don't know how long this person had it, but when Burnham found out, he plugged it. Mm -hmm. 
so I told the person, I said, when, if you don't have so much oil, how come this is showing such pressure? He smiled. He said, I will tell you something in confidence. We do have, you do have oil in commercial quantities, but what happened? These oil magnets would play it down and say you don't have because they would keep you as a reserve. Mm -hmm. Because in case any eventuality, right? Mm -hmm. Now, what happened is that these oil companies, we didn't know as, as at that time, this particular oil company was a prospect in oil, right? Prospecting. They didn't want to do a business in oil, but they told Barnum they wanted to, and they just did a prospecting. Now, for them to do this, you must have financiers. Mm. So these oil magnets would finance these companies, the exploration companies, mm. but they're not looking forward for a profit because they know it's an exploration um, Yes, we right, call right. It, uh, it's, it's ex in exploration mode right now. It's not production, right. right? Good. Now, what happened here now is this. When the I'll, when the, the I'll company, when the Reagan company finish the operation and go back to where they're supposed to be, they will be given each investor, these oil magnets that invest, they will give them the report, the sociological report plus the geological report with the entire geological plan with the, the numbers, right? Mm -hmm. Now, when they did that, when they know, they, they, before they come and do any investment in your country to do research, sociological, so on, they know Bonham won't last long. Now the thing is they wait for the right time. Then they spoke to Janet, President Janet. Then President Janet gave them some concession, but they, did, they waited until they get the right people. Mm -hmm. Now when they get the right persons, then they decided. To do that, well, right, to, to right, uh, uh, do the business. Well, I hear you, dear. I hear now, you. Now the dear. point is uh -huh. this: when, if you are going to be doing business, signing a contract for this aisle, you're supposed to be, you're supposed to be signing this contract within the, the country, not out of the country. It's like if you're going to beg these people, you're going into their country to sign a contract. Now, when, pres when the, the former president said. He didn't remember at one time he said he didn't see the contract, mm -hmm. the aisle contract, good. Mm -hmm. We know he's not honest to the fullest, but this particular point he was telling the truth. Because when this minister, let us say that I'm the minister, when I, the resource minister, go there to sign a contract, I suppose they left a specimen of the agreement with the president, he should know what it is. Now when I went there, to sign this contract. It wasn't that contract. So when he said he didn't see it, he was true because he's not a signatory of this contract. Now, for any minister, there is a problem, there is, and there is the, the cause of the problem. Now, here's the solution. Any minister, mm -hmm. assuming the author executive authority, right, of the president, to sign a contract, a resource of the contract at this magnitude, it means, therefore, you exceed your authority. Only the president supposed to be ex. Well, I'm not sure because they sat down in cabinet and ratified that. I understand. So we're not sure. We got we got to look into it. Yeah, Only a lawyer could probably tell us that. If the minister should assume such authority, there is treason. Plus, that agreement is non void. I hear you. I hear you with that. And so, 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 bottom line is. You know, there's a lot of things that went wrong with this entire oil thing, yeah, and, so and why we are, need to why fix are it. Why they honoring it? Why are they honoring it? Well, we have production that's tight, and there's a whole bunch of stuff. You just can't yes. eject them. There's but international norms we, and so on. We have the authority. We can't show weakness. We have the authority to renegotiate, mm -hmm. right? You renegotiate, re re and you don't accept less than 4 to 7% plus tax. I the hear what you're saying. Because oh. whenever they leave, right, mm -hmm. they leave a lot of mess. Mm -hmm. And when they said that we have X amount of time for this aisle to expire. These people have money to invest in technology to do rapid extraction. Mm -hmm. So it would finish before that time. Mm -hmm. So what do you think would happen with us when they leave? 
I hear you very, very clear, sir. The environmental and, problem. Yeah, right, right. All right, uh, so we're coming on to the thing. But I hear what you're saying, and I think you're right on the ball with some of the thinkings that you have there. Yeah, but here's the thing. You have liars, international liars, that, by, that had bisect this agreement, and they see all the clause within, the, the faults within it. Right, right. So if Guyana should consult with them, they would see the ways in which they could force um, Exxon or Ratsan uh -huh. to renegotiate. Right, right, right. right. I hear you. I, I would like to make more contribution, but time wouldn't allow. Yes, I hear you. We'll keep calling, man, right, 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 many things. And I keep you, I, I thank you for keeping in touch with this. It's a very important issue. Yes, so the, the point is this, is the minister at fault. He doesn't have the authority of the president. Only the president got the executive power to sign away such a magnitude. Got right. you. God bless you, so, my brother. Thank so you as, very much. Yes. Right. So as we come down, and so very good point there by the caller, and it's very good that we get ourselves familiar with the situations in this country here, where the deals is happening, because at the end of the day, it is those deals that is going to put money, it's going to put revenues in our pocket, and if we don't get a better deal, if we can't improve on what we have right now, um, then we in the, in the wrong business. We should uh, get our authorities, our leadership, when they said that they wanted us uh, to, they wanted to go into our Office, they would have been telling us that we're here to represent you, we're here to ensure that you get a better life. And the only way to do that is to ensure that you maximize on, and on our earnings, that we improve on it, we increase it, and we find innovative ways without putting more pressure on the people, over taxing them or any other thing along those lines. So as we come back, as we come down to uh, program time, I want to say a good day to everybody who would have been joining us. It's been a very um, a good day to us. It's been a, um, uh, let me see, yesterday. Hi, sir, yesterday, me and my grandmother went to pay gt and bill at BV at the gt and office, and they get everyone waiting outside, standing in the hot sun, not even a shelter for the old people. And this is something, you know, when, when I look at this, it gets me very, very upset that uh, we don't understand customer service um, uh, for our people. Um, I want, let me see, one, one thing else. Okay, good afternoon. I heard about the mother issue with the children and lessons. I had to message you some weeks about my children and CXP classes. And it's only lesson work they were receiving. Now they, they are introducing school teaching. Yeah, it is something, this thing is really affecting. It's really getting a lot of families very upset. Their parents, moms are very, very concerned. So wherever you're joining us from, this has been a, the Wake Up Show. It has been the Wake Up Gayana Show right here on Kaicho Radio. I'm your host, Leonard Gildari. You could look back at the uh, at this show here right here on Kaicho Radio on Facebook or Kaicho Radio YouTube, live stream on YouTube. And of course, we would have been coming to you uh, right across this beautiful land on uh, 99.1 and uh, 99.5. And that's if you're in Barbies, 99.5 and 99.1 in Demerara and Eskimo. And a good day to all the minibus and the taxis and the high car drivers out there and the conductors and everybody and the vendors down at Starbrook and the rest of the markets right across Guyana. Wherever you are, we know that everybody is working hard and they want to do um, uh, the good thing. Uh, they want to benefit, they want to have a good life. Let us not sit back and sit on our hands. You all each have a role to play. Um, uh, we have to ensure that we open those mouths. Let us do that. As citizens, you have many rights. And one of the rights uh, that you have is that you could be able to tell uh, the persons that uh, you elect, whether it's in the NDC or in the office there, there are many ways that you could do it. You could visit the NDC office or you could write letters in the newspaper. You could write a letter to the president. You could write a letter to a minister. You could uh, go on Facebook. You could go on YouTube. Wherever it is that you could send messages in so many ways to our uh, authorities and says, I want you to look into this. You could call in to Kaicho Radio here right on Wake Up Guyana. And so we could wake up ourselves and smell the coffee because it is time for you to live a better life, a good life. And the only way you could do that is by demanding so. So thank you guys for joining us wherever you're from. This has been your edition of the Wake Up Gyan Show. We are going to be back same place, same time tomorrow right on Kaicho Radio. So thank you very much, uh, my boy at the control. I want to say good day to Tshanalal, her birthday celebrations today. I'm going to be heading downstairs now, and we're going to see what happens here.
Have a pleasant rest of the day, folks.